Serious, ladies and gentlemen, with us here tonight here in Weymouth. He's had great reviews. The daily newspapers have hailed him as the, the new this, the new that. He isn't the new anything or anyone. He's the brand new, brand spanking, very funny, Mr. Johnny Casson. Come on, John. <laughs> Jesus and Joseph are watching you. They shone the torch and there was a big parrot in a cage. He said, Jesus, that's a stupid name for a parrot. <laughs> the parrot said, yes, but Joseph is a good name for a Rottweiler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you better have got one in a row then, didn't you? <laughs> hey, <I'm... laughs> Hey, no, but I know that when I walk on here every night, I always get a chance. And do you know, lady, that's all you want when you're a comic is a chance. Oh, I, I, I'm not asking you for a kidney. I mean, hold on. Because listen, some nights I'm as funny as a crack in a glass eye. And, uh, <laughs> can you imagine what it feels like on a dare walk off? I owe that much money. Right? And, uh, <laughs> I'm as broke as the Ten Commandments. And, uh, <laughs> And you know, ladies and jobs, Raps, I, I, I don't spend money. No, it's my wife, uh, Raquel. She does all the damage. And, you know, I don't mind being married, but the hours are too long. <laughs> oh, oh, I've tried hard with her. I bought my wife a book on oral sex, and she ate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy being married, I don't care. And I was thinking the other day, in fact, why do people bother getting married? I mean, why don't you just meet somebody that you don't like and buy a house? <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, you know, I'll be honest here, I think my wife would divorce me if she could find a way of doing it without making me happy. <laughs> Mind you, she's good in bed. <clears throat> well, till I get in. <laughs> Ladies and Jesses, it's um, it's when you get children into the your life, folks. You see, we've got three kids, and with three, oh, uh, we have four, but we hung one as an example. <laughs> I believe in discipline, don't you? <laughs> but you see, having said that, because that was me talking then. Um, thank you. <laughs> 
Them kids you've kept us together. Oh, are they have. Well, she won't take them and I'm not having them. <laughs> In fact, ladies and jerks, I, um, <laughs> I had trouble before I came down here this weekend, right? Now, my wife, oh, as I call her, leader of the opposition, right? <laughs> she called a little ooh, because she, she has this condition, my wife, by the way, it's called ratnophobia. And um, ratnophobia, it's the fear of waking up in cheap jewellery. Right? <laughs> I'm glad you had a nice crowd because I'd have had a nice sleep last night. I couldn't sleep last night. One of the dancers were knocking on my bedroom door all bloody night. In the end, I had to let her out. Hey, I won't keep you much longer now. You're nice people. I'm getting on my own nerves now. No, but ladies and Jesuits, you know... Last weekend, my wife, I was at home last weekend. Hey, look at these bloody pants I got last weekend. Right? Would you believe I fell for that? It said 25% of all trousers. <laughs> but anyway, I went home at the weekend because I lived there, you know, and um, my wife, oh, she caught a little lad uh, playing with himself in the bath again. So she says to me, go and have a word with him about that before you go back to Weymouth. Right, so, I went in his bedroom and I was a bit stern with him. I said, hey, James, you must stop playing with yourself like that because it's a nasty habit for a little boy, that. And as you get older, it will affect your eyesight. <laughs> he said, I'm over here, Dad. <laughs> to make the job worthwhile. Can I tell you that? You have to suffer to do comedy, you know. Oh, I... Do you know I didn't have sex for 11 years, me? And, and then on my 12th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's this? <laughs> it's a man with plastic hips still next to a radiator. <laughs> Life isn't long enough to find. And it, you know, one thing I'll never understand if I live to be normal, right? Is, uh, is colour prejudice. How can you not like somebody you've never met? People are people, aren't they? When you see them black athletes like Linford Christie, <laughs> stamina, oh, I wish I could get him in bed with me, though, I said. What, not a perv? I just wanted to get some jump leads on his body. <laughs> I've never been good at that business, mate. And uh, I make love like a video, mate. Fast forward, pause, and eject. It's <laughs> <laughs> so, alright. So, I can tell you this we were very, very poor when I was a kid. I mean, really poor. But, you know, that didn't stop us from being miserable. <laughs> We're all coal mines and mills where I was born, and I can remember my father coming home five o'clock every day, and he was as black as the ace of spades, and I don't know why, because he worked in a bank, but you know. <laughs> but you've been absolutely splendid for me. You've got to help where you can along the way, you know, and uh, my wife's into car boot sales, and ooh, she, got, ooh, she got this aftershave on the car boot the other week, and this aftershave, only a pound for a big bottle like that, the smell drives women mad, right? It smells like money. And, uh, well, no, she's all right, but she's very sarcastic. You know, we were in the house um, shortly ago, and, um, and my wife's been using that oil of ugly. You know, <laughs> oh, she tries out. She had she tried a mud pack the other week, you know. And you know, she looked lovely for two days, <laughs> and then the mud fell off. And, uh, no, but uh, can you mind? You've got to look after people where we can, right? There's an old man there. He's had to have blood tests. When he goes back for the results, he takes his wife with him, because the old man's dead. And um, the doctor says, right, Mrs. Harbottle. He said, do you know there's nothing wrong with your husband's blood? It's in good condition for a man of his age. The old man said, eh, what did he say? <laughs> she said, your blood's all right, Albert, in the bottle of my brother. He said, well, I've got him here. I'll just test his heart and his lungs with my horoscope. And, uh, <laughs> right, you just lift his liberty body, so we'll have a little bit. <laughs> he said, that's... 
That's a good steady heart, mate. There's nothing wrong with your heart, the old man said. Eh, what did he say? She said, your heart's all right, Albert, as well, though. <laughs> Went round the back, he said, lungs sound as a pound. I would say he's a non-smoker, even. The old man says, what's he said, he said, no, He said, your lungs are all right, as well, Albert. He said, I'll do further tests on him, but just a second of your mind. He said, now, I'm going to need a sample of urine, a sample of excrement, and a sperm sample. The old man said, what did he say? <laughs> she said, you've got to leave your underpants at reception. <laughs> Enjoy your lives. And don't worry about this recession, because when this one's over, they've got another one lined up. <laughs> you've got to enjoy life where you can. And one thing you must always remember, ladies and gentlemen, that wherever you go in life, well, there you are. <laughs> and see you again. Good night. Thank you. Trust me now, can't you? <coughs> Buy my car. <laughs>